glad we can join for another uh, time of uh, study and discussion and uh, continuing to grow uh, in the knowledge of the scriptures. Um, before we go ahead and begin, uh, let's, as usual, ask Praveen to lead us in a prayer. Okay. Father, we are in your presence, Lord. We want to thank you for giving us another opportunity that we could gather together and to learn more about your word and discuss various spiritual matters, Lord. Especially uh, as we're going to discuss about spiritual discipline of confession, I pray that your spirit may uh, work in our hearts and minds so that we may be able to perceive and receive what you are trying to communicate to us, Lord. Speak to us through your servant. And the time we spend, Lord, may be, uh, may be a time of meaningful discussion and it may edify everyone, Lord. We want, for you, we want, for your, we want your leading and guidance and uh, especially your, your presence, Lord, and your help so that we will not face any technical difficulties. And our discussions may be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Praveen. And uh, like uh, Praveen mentioned in his opening prayer, today our subject is uh, the spiritual discipline of confession. And uh, the very word confession can bring so many, uh, what do you call it, uh, thoughts in our minds, uh, so many uh, aspects and you know uh, uh, practices. Uh, we keep hearing about how various people practice the uh, this discipline of confession, not only in the Christian faith but also uh, across the various uh, faiths of the world. Uh, there is the concept of confession, uh, <clears throat> and it is uh, practiced. It is uh, manifested in so many different ways. So. But we are going to focus on this, on our scriptures, the Bible, and let us see what the Bible tells us. But before we do that, just wanted to know what comes to your mind as we talk about the discipline of confession. Uh, what's your thoughts on it? Uh, your, your experience of it? Uh, let me see if I can get a sampling of, uh, uh, you know, thoughts because you may be you may, you know, for example, sometimes confession brings thoughts of sadness or remorse. Uh, but for some others, it might bring relief. Uh, you know, we might think in terms of honesty when we talk about confession. Uh, so, and some people even say that confession is good for the soul. So, uh, give me some of your thoughts on confession. Yes, Surya Murthy, please unmute yourself as you share your thoughts. Confess your sins one to another. Mm. That comes to mind. Okay. So what I normally do, whenever I commit mistakes, I tell others I commit this mistake. I learn to improve. Or you don't do that. I think that is also one way of confessing. Okay. Not necessarily the sin, the way in which the Bible looks at it. Any right. faults we have? Yes, that's interesting. Uh, in fact, I do have a small section on that, but it's not easy to do that, isn't it? I mean, sometimes it's uh, so... Uh, it... for, for me, it's so easy. <laughs> okay. Looks like you're a very humble man. You're willing to accept your mistakes, you know, which is not easy <laughs> for a lot of people. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Anil, go ahead. Yeah, but the Bible also says uh, we have sinned against God and come before God with your, uh, you know, repentance and so on. So, yeah, I found it is much easier to go before God and ask for forgiveness <laughs> for the sin than to go to the person, which, you know. Uh, <laughs> but yes, it also brings, a, uh, my experience is that one keeps feeling guilty 
until you have confessed to god and said then it then it really a feeling of relief comes over you that's my experience okay hmm. yes very interesting a sense of relief yes uh, uh, definitely a lot of people will feel that and you also mentioned repentance so uh, hmm. maybe confession uh, is somewhat like repentance you would think right okay correct yeah. right for franklin and vincent uh, who have just joined in we are uh, speaking on or uh, the topic today is the spiritual discipline of confession just for your knowledge so rimurthy you had a thought yes when i make a mistake and when i make a serious mistake i don't spare some time to go to god and tell that i am doing something wrong yeah. the moment i commit the sin i know i am committing something wrong and i tell him straight away i am committing something wrong yeah Okay, I guess it is easier to do that to go to God, and uh, because in any case He knows, <laughs> you can't hide anything from Him. <laughs> yes. Uh, who else want to venture a thought on this? Confession? Right. Right. Okay. Well, I guess uh, you will have your. opportunity to to say something or to probably ask a question um but you know one of the things that uh, uh so people will will wonder uh in terms of uh, uh confession uh when god already knows of course like we said he already knows that you Uh, all your mistakes all your sins and sinfulness he even knows the very thoughts that we have sinful thoughts that we have if he can if he knows and on the other hand we are read in the scriptures that god has already purchased our redemption i mean i'm just using some biblical language there uh you know uh, or if or i should say if god has already engineered that forgiveness why do we have to confess you know and that's a question i think some people might struggle with uh, to some extent for example i mean uh, i read in the book of psalm 103 and this is a very uh, very familiar verse that we uh, refer to on many occasions uh, psalm 103 verse 12 it says as far as east is from the west so far does god remove my sin and so when we have verses like that and let me just read you uh, one or two more verses in hebrews chapter 9 and verse 26 here it says he and talking about jesus has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself all right and one more verse in chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 and verse 14 it says for by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified these verses very clearly indicate that jesus christ has removed sin he has given the fitting answer to sin sin in one sense uh, is removed uh, as far as east is from the west so the question again you know begs itself uh, why con- confess right when christ has won uh, and removed uh, won the battle for us and removed the sin from us okay another question ka that comes to mind does god need a confession to forgive if he has already forgiven does he need a confession to again forgive or is he limited by our confession in other words is his sacrifice effective only when we confess so these are questions that i think will come to uh mind and uh, let me just venture to just discuss that for for a moment i think we should understand and especially from our trinitarian perspective that we have come to see how god is love and how god has uh you know um has done everything for us 
and one and, and has given us salvation uh, by grace, not by works. We must definitely recognize that God, God's forgiveness is not, you should say, God is not limited by our confession to forgive, right? That is, that's a point I want to make uh, very clear. Uh, his forgiveness is not sort of constrained by what we do or don't do. Uh, it is not that unless we repent of every sin or confess every sin, only then forgiveness is effective. If that is true, then we are going to be in trouble. Why are we going to be in trouble? Because can you remember all your sins? Can any one of us as human beings remember every last sin you have done? So if God's forgiveness comes only because of our confession, then there are many sins that we may not have remembered. Sometimes we don't even know we have sinned. Right. And so the question, uh, you know, uh, is a, a crucial one for us to answer. Uh, we must remember that, you know, uh, we have another verse in the book of Revelation. It says the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world. Here, God, uh, this verse seemed to indicate that God's intention was never to retain sin or to remember our sin, or to keep our sin, you know, uh, for him to, uh, you know, to, to keep feel, making us feel guilty. That is not, that, that just goes against God's very in, in nature and his, his, his intention. What we must understand is here that Jesus died for our sins. He purchased our forgiveness for us before we were even born. All right. Uh, and that's why it talks about the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19, here the apostle tells us, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. In other words, he forgave us even before we could confess. Right? Even before we could effectively repent, even before we could come to confess and even know our sins, God has dealt with sin effectively as the Lamb of God. All right? So, confession is not something that limits God uh, for forgiveness or his forgiveness doesn't come only because we confess. That is the point I want to make. And maybe if you, if you have any questions on that, we'll discuss that. But let me move then to ask the question, then why confess? Obviously, the, the question that we have to ask is, for what reason do we then confess? Why is the scriptures talking about confession? Right? And it might it, 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 some of the scriptures might indicate that unless we confess, we are not forgiven. And yet the Bible says God has removed our sins. So uh, I want to reiterate, I want to give you the confidence that there is no contradiction there. It is the, the contradiction is the way we understand. So let me then uh, give you some points as to why must we confess our sins? Why does the Bible reiterate the need for us to confess our sins? And uh, I'm just going to bring out some points uh, uh, and I won't take the time to read scripture here, but I will refer to a few scriptures uh, as we move along. One, uh, one point we must keep in mind is God has already removed our sin. So the question is, why confess? Point number one, to be aware of our sins, that we are sinners. When we confess, what we are doing is, we are making aware, ourselves aware. In other words, confession in one sense is for us, not for God. God is not the one who needs our confession. We need our confession. So the first, very first point we need to keep in mind is 
when we confess, we become aware that we indeed are sinners. Okay? Now, when we understand that we are sinners, uh, uh, the point number two that I would like to go to is that the only way to enjoy freedom, true freedom, is to have that sin removed. So when we confess, we are aware that we are sinners, we have sinned, we fall short regularly, and we then remind ourselves through confession that the only way we can enjoy a sense of freedom from that sin is for that sin to be removed. All right? So let's then, that leads us to the third point. When we know and are become aware of our sin and it has to be removed so that we may enjoy a sense of freedom, we begin to see the need for Jesus Christ. Right? We see the need for Christ because he is the only one who has removed sin. Right? His intervention has what has removed sin. It is not what we have done or what we can ever do to remove sin. So confession leads us to be aware of the fact that we are sinners and to help us to understand that for that sin to be removed, we need the sacrifice of Christ our Lord, his intervention, and of course, his incarnation. Now, what else could confession help us with? I go to point four. Confession also helps us to understand, or maybe I should say, to sensitize us to resist it, to make us sensitive to it so that we may try to overcome it, that we don't become complacent to sin and sinfulness in our lives, right? And once again, that helps us to see the need for Jesus because only Christ's humanity can help us. And his, uh, what do you say, the, the empowering of the Holy Spirit can help us to overcome sin. So confession sensitizes us that we must resist. Yes, it has been removed. Yes, Christ has given the answer to sin. But do we continue in a sinful attitude? Do we continue to fall and to keep falling into sin? Now, in our weakness, we might, and we, we don't achieve a sense of perfection in this lifetime. We know that, but we must be sensitive to the fact that sin is, uh, you know, a deadly force. It robs us of our happiness and joy and a sense of freedom, and we need Christ once again, right? And let me then move to the fifth point. Confession is a way to receive and enjoy redemption. Let me make that point clear. Let us not forget, redemption is already given to us. It's a gift, right? But a gift must be received. Confession is a way to receive the redemption, to receive the gift of forgiveness, right? Uh, so it's only when we receive it that we experience its benefits. The only way we can experience the benefit of redemption and God's forgiveness is by receiving it. And, that, and the act of confession is a way to receive that, uh, that gift. Maybe I could say a, a word that we use quite often now in our fellowship is participation. It's a confession is a way of participation in the act of redemption that was made in Christ alone. Christ alone won the redemption for us, but we are participating now in him, with him and in him, to then uh, receive the benefit of confession. I want to say a, a little bit more on the benefit of confession. You see, confession, like I said, I think with the five points I've made, very clearly established the fact confession is not necessarily for God. It is for us. It is to help us. And it is not necessarily a condition for forgiveness. There is no condition for forgiveness. Grace has no condition. Grace is freely given. The question is whether we receive it. And that's where confession 
comes in. But talking about the benefits of confession and how we enjoy it, how we enjoy the benefits of redemption, is uh, we need to recognize that confession and forgiveness are realities that transform us. Confession is, a, is an act, or you could say an attitude of mind where we are being transformed. Like I mentioned earlier, it makes us aware of sin. It sensitizes us to overcome it. So the transformation is possible only when we indulge in these disciplines of confession and forgiveness, uh, you know, rather repentance on a regular basis. May I say something which I think is very important for us to recognize. It brings a healing. Perhaps I should say uh, inner healing when we indulge in the discipline of confession, right? It brings a transformation of our inner spirit when we indulge in confession. And in this regard, let me go to the book of Psalm again. And I want to read uh, uh, Psalm chap chapter 32. And I'm going to read verses one to six. And I feel this really brings out this benefit of confession uh, quite clearly. And uh, uh, I'm going to read from the Living Bible. This, the translation here makes it so much more uh, you know, uh, pertinent and very much alive and brings the point home quite clearly. So let me read you Psalm 32, beginning in verse one. And remember, we're talking about how confession brings us the benefit of that redemption so that we can enjoy it. He, it the, the psalmist says, what happiness for those whose guilt has been forgiven. What joys when sins are covered over. What relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their record. There was a time and I wouldn't admit what a sinner I was, but my dishonesty made me miserable and filled my days with frustration. All day and all night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water on a sunny day until I finally admitted all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide them. I said to myself, I will confess them to the Lord. And you forgive me. All my guilt is gone. Now I say that each believer should confess his sins to God when he is aware of them. While there is time to be forgiven, judgment will not touch him if he does. I thought those words uh, very clearly brings out how confession removes our guilt. God has already removed it. He doesn't necessarily need our confession, but we need it. We need it for ourselves. We need it so that we can bring back the joy of salvation in our lives. As David, the prophet David says, we need it because otherwise we remain miserable. We remain because the Holy Spirit in us will convict us that there is something not right. The Holy Spirit in us will prompt us to want to go and confess it and acknowledge it and not hide it, right? So confession is that. And I think it's a very important discipline, a very important discipline. And it is something I would say uh, from a counselor's perspective, very important for psychological and mental health. Right. Uh, when, uh, you know, a confession is a way for us to regain and to restore a sense of mental well-being. But when we are ridden with guilt, there is a great deal of anguish we go through. So confession is mostly for us and uh, mainly for us. Right. It is for our benefit, not necessarily for, uh, you know, for as a condition for God to forgive us. Now, uh, let me move to from there. I was trying to answer the question, why confession? Uh, but I think it was Surya Murthy who brought up this confessing to one another. 
And I think that's something that we need to just uh, spend a moment on. And uh, the scripture here is from James, the book of James chapter 5 and verse 16. It says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, what is this kind of confession, right? Let me say what it is not. It is not a command to share all your embarrassing and dirty laundry with others. Right? Uh, that is not what uh, God wants, you know, for us to uh, go and, uh, you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> if, if you want to do it, that's a different matter. But that is not what uh, confessing one to another is basically advocating. Let me also say that it is not a mandate to have confessional booths in church. <laughs> and you might, uh, you might uh, recognize what I'm referring to. It is not something that we do where we sit in, a, in, a, in an enclosure and uh, start confessing. And then somebody on the other side will, will absolve you. <laughs> uh, you don't need absolution from any human being in one sense. Uh, absolution comes from God. But, but there is an important reason uh, that we do need co to confess to one another. And basically, it is for us to recognize that we do sin not only with against God, but we sin against each other, don't we? We, we, we cause harm, we cause distress, we cause tremendous amount of anguish to one another. And in that respect, we not only need forgiveness from God, we need forgiveness from one another, right? Uh, we, and then that forgiveness must lead to reconciliation. I think that is very clear in the scriptures. This is when I think confessing to one another becomes very pertinent, very important, and of course, uh, very meaningful. So when it says confess your sins to one another, I am presuming here, there's a presumption on my part, that the sin is against the other person. Sin is against each other. And there, there is a need for us to acknowledge it and receive forgiveness from the others and to be able to facilitate reconciliation. That is the reason why in Galatians chapter 6, uh, here in verse 1, it says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. So very interesting. Here the, uh, the scripture tells us that we who are, you know, spiritual brethren in the church should watch out for each other, should be mindful of how Others are living their lives, not as a busy body, not as, you know, being intrusive, not being uh, true inquisitive. But when we openly see that there are some basic faults that people are indulging in and it becomes very openly so. That's why it says we must be careful that we are not tempted to do the same. It talks about trying to restore, restore people in a, spirit of reckon, uh, in a spirit of gentleness. Now, the word restore, be, uh, restoring somebody caught in a sin is clearly going to involve helping them to confess it, isn't it? So confession to one another is, I am presuming once again, in the wider context of sinning against one another. In uh, Matthew 18, it talks about how when we offend one another, we must go to the person and, uh, conf you know, and then talk about the sin between the, themselves. So these are ways that uh, I would like to look at confession uh, with one another. Now, that doesn't mean to say that, you know, we can't confess our sins against God with one another. That, that definitely is also, uh, you know, very much acceptable. And maybe uh, is part of what the scripture is trying to allude. I would like to say that the scripture is perhaps alluding mostly to the sins against one another. But yes, uh, we can take help from each other. We can confess. I think like one of you said, 
it helps you to remove the guilt and it help, helps uh, you know to overcome uh, these uh, these attitudes especially that begins to trouble us so i hope that uh, those thoughts might suffice for us to speak about confession there are many more things that perhaps we could deal with but i just wanted to touch upon the main aspect of why confession and specifically to recognize that we do not need uh, i mean god does not need our confession it is we who need it i want to end by uh, uh, giving you a quotation from richard foster who once again is uh, one of those who have written extensively on these uh, subjects uh, and i thought that uh, some of the thoughts that he brings in in this uh, particular quotation is can be very helpful let me read to you this quotation and then we will get into our discussion richard foster says confession is a difficult discipline for us because we all too often view the believing community as a fellowship of saints before we see it as a fellowship of sinners he goes on to say but if we know that the people of god are first a fellowship of sinners we are free to hear the unconditional call of god's love and to confess our needs openly before a brother or sister we know we are not alone in our sin the fear and pride that cling to us like barnacles cling to others also we are sinners together in acts of mutual confession we release the power that heals our humanity is no longer denied but transformed and that's the note i'd like to leave uh, this study on confession is for our transformation it is for our inner healing and it is for us to be able to receive the gift of forgiveness that is already made possible right from the very foundations of the world by the lamb of god whom of course we worship and we will worship very specifically in the advent season as we come along okay thank you very much for your attention let me open it up for some comments questions thoughts i'm sure you can add something yes sorry murthy go ahead make sure you unmute yourself thank you we frequently talk about god removing the sins in the past we used to understand that god was removing the penalty of sins whenever the word come whenever you use the phrase removing the sins sins we used to understand that god is removing the penalty of sins okay there was one way of looking at that another way of looking at is god is removing the sin from your records okay. your database so which are, which is my correct understanding or both are correct understanding <laughs> i just want to know what is meant by god removing the sins right yes uh, yeah there are various ways of looking at it the way i will look, i will answer you uh, for that question is first and foremost you said god removes the penalty of sin now when you say penalty of sin i am presuming you are talking about the ultimate penalty which is death you know eternal death or you know uh, uh, that that is what you probably mean but we we need to recognize sometimes god does not necessarily remove the effects of sin right you could say that could be uh, like a penalty that we pay in this lifetime uh, for example if a person who has uh, you know uh, stole a considerable amount of money may go to jail that effect of sin may not necessarily be removed he may still have to suffer in jail but uh, when we talk about removing the penalty of sin i am once again presuming we are talking about the ultimate effect in the sense of uh, being separated from god uh the second point you mentioned uh he has removed sin i can only i can only refer to what uh, john says about uh, uh, that is john the baptist who says uh, as jesus christ you know uh, ushers in his ministry uh, john the baptist says the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world right in other words he has effectively removed the sins of the world uh so 
lock, stock, and barrel. Sin has been defeated, like the Apostle Paul says in Corinthians, that uh, the sting of sin is death, and death has been vanquished. Death has been overcome by Jesus Christ our Lord. So sin itself has been removed, right? And then it's and when the psalmist says, as far as east is from the west, so far does God remove my sin. So sin itself has been dealt with and we never have to worry about it in the fullness of the kingdom. So I, my answer to you is both. He has removed the ultimate penalty and he has removed sin itself. And in the fullness of the kingdom, we will never have to worry about that. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else want to uh, add to that? Uh, I think Mrs. Noah want to say something. Uh, Somebody should help you unmute, Mrs. Noah. We will wait for you to un be unmuted and then. In the Lord's Prayer, yeah. Jesus has taught us to, the prayer he has taught us that in that it is says, forgive us as we forgive them, those who forgive us. Correct. So this is what Jesus has taught us to pray. Okay. Uh, perhaps, yes, uh, uh, forgive others as uh, we have been forgiven, right? Forgive our, forgive our debtors as we have been forgiven, right? I, I think what Jesus meant in that prayer is that just as we have been forgiven, much, much greater, you know, uh, debts, how, you know, we must be willing to extend that same sense of forgiveness especially to even minor sins of others. Remember, I said that we can sin against each other. And so in that respect, we must also imbibe an attitude of forgiveness because we have received forgiveness. I think that is uh, what uh, Jesus specifically meant. I think we can talk more about that, but anyone wants to add to that? Okay. I have Otherwise. a question. Yes, Anil. <laughs> now you said for, uh, forgive others as we have been forgiven. Does it imply that you forgive others only after they've sought your forgiveness or you forgive them anyway? <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, you, are you inferring that uh, they must fall on their knees and confess to you? <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. They can just hold their hands and say, forgive me. <laughs> uh, I, would, I would think we must maintain an attitude of forgiveness, which means to say, even before they come to you, you right. have already given you you know uh, given your forgiveness. Because remember, if you don't, you are the one who is hurting inside. <laughs> yes, yes. Does it I I I read a good quotation the other day, which says, if you hold on to your uh, you know bitterness against somebody, it's yeah. like you know. You are drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. But it's very true. I mean, uh, you know, there are these attitudes and I think even science is beginning to prove that, you know, psychological science is proving that, that these attitudes uh, only hurt us more uh, as well as hurting the others. Yes. So we are killing ourselves also. <laughs> right. Okay, confession. Who wants to confess? <laughs> uh, yes, Vanessa, go ahead. And then Praveen, I think you had a thought. So after Vanessa, go ahead, Vanessa. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was I was in a uh, Catholic uh, school, a boarding school, where. Uh, Every every month, the priest would come and we would have to go and have confession. So in school, there is not many sins that we can do, especially in a boarding school. We cannot commit many sins, but uh, we should try to make up some sins. If uh, the study hour, we used to go to... to sit and wait for our turn to confess the sins. So I, I did not take this confession very, very I mean, uh, seriously. 
it was like a game or joke to us in school. Uh, so after I left school, then of course in, in the Catholic churches, uh, before mass, the father is sitting over there, as you say, in a pew in a way you have to go and confess. So I thought, okay, let's go now. Many years have passed, I haven't gone. So I usually try not to, in my hometown, go because the priest knows me and he will hear my sins. And if he sees me, okay, Vanessa, you have done this, you have committed this. So, okay, avoid it. Maybe if I go to a new place, a new church, then okay, confess over there go to the priest and confess certain things that you do that that you don't feel like telling the priest you have confessed it okay, okay so confession was not a very serious thing with me and being younger i i uh, truthfully know that okay you confess to god this didn't cross my mind that okay so years passed and now when matured when i have matured i have I have come to know what confession to god is really about so sometimes like a sins that i have forgotten about something that suddenly popped into my mind that oh i have done this wrong so that that keeps coming into my mind and that now nowadays i keep confessing whatever comes to my mind sometimes i keep confessing to god that to forgive me now uh, there are of course i know i am forgiven but there are many things that we as you say it is best if you uh, tell the person okay so sometimes i have done maybe something to somebody very long time ago maybe i'm not in touch with that person i don't know where that person is so what i feel is that if if i have sinned and i i cannot say sorry to that person but i'm saying sorry to god who has uh, already forgiven me but if i pray for that person all the people whom i have wronged in any sort of way so if i pray for them uh, don't you think that i am forgiven for what grave mistakes i have done to people who i i'm not in touch with i have not seen and maybe long time ago when i was younger maybe something happened so am i forgiven in that way or do i i have to confess to a person okay well uh, that's an interesting question i never uh, heard that question before but uh, let me just uh, say something which you said earlier that you used to make up sins so that you go and confess the very act of making up a sin is a is a sin by itself isn't it <laughs> because you're being dishonest uh, yeah uh, anyway having said that uh, you know uh, when you talk about uh, sins that you may have committed and you don't have an opportunity to go and tell the person or confess it to the person uh, yes i think you confess it to god but if you do have an opportunity i would still think and if you know that that has affected your relationship with that person, I would still think it is, you know, worthwhile for you to go and uh, make up with that person. Reconciliation is something that uh, is a very strong theme of the scriptures. So, but if you don't have opportunity and you are removed from that particular person, you know, for uh, in, in geography as well as year in time, many years have gone by. In that respect, obviously, you have no opportunity to go and speak to that person. In that respect, I would think if you felt that you wronged the person, then ask for God's forgiveness. I would think so. Is that okay, Vanessa? <laughs> I, uh, right? Okay. <laughs> Praveen, you had a thought, I think. Yeah, what I wanted to share, Vanessa has already touched upon. Um, it is like a, the scripture definitely encourages us to forget, confess our sins to one another. But it is uh, equally important for us also to have a, create an atmosphere where people can uh, confess uh, openly. You know, unfortunately, uh, in the church also, we were not able to, to create such a healthy atmosphere where members can confess their sins or where they can confess their weakness. Uh, so uh, as a, 
member member body of as members of the body of Christ, we also we have to keep that in mind. We need to be sensitive uh, towards uh, the confidential confidentiality of uh, the members, and also as leaders, we have a responsibility to teach. Uh, the same to the members and making them aware and uh, making them <coughs> uh, to, uh, to be sensitive to these matters. So as of now, um, though the scripture teaches us to confess our sins to one another, but uh, uh, the present situation in the church uh, is not up to the standards that we have, uh, uh, standards where we can... Uh, a healthy situation is not present everywhere where we could uh, confess. So uh, even the people who are confessing, they should be aware and careful where they are confessing and uh, should find uh, the right person. There only we have to do. Otherwise, it is going to cause even much more damage to uh, individuals as well as the uh, body of press together. So we should... Uh, may, we should uh, uh, make uh, we should use our common sense and uh, so we should uh, be able to discern the situation and the people and then only we should be doing that yes uh, praveen that uh, uh, you you spoke about confidentiality and i think uh, that's a very crucial word uh, we must keep in mind uh, if people come and uh, you know confess to us uh, you know, breaking confidentiality is a very, uh, it's actually an offense and that can cause greater damage. And so if any one of us have opportunity where people come and tell us about their difficulties, we must be careful that that, that is not passed on in a way that is, becomes gossip. You know, you've heard of the word gossip. Uh, and unfortunately, I think, Praveen, what you said is so true that uh, uh, the current situation in the church uh, does not give us that confidence to be able to talk. And I have on many occasions in my counselings, I've spoken to people and uh, they are afraid to go and talk to their pastor because many times it is not confidential or they don't want to talk to any of their leaders because they feel that the confidentiality will be betrayed. Uh, so, so yes, in confession, I think, uh, you know, especially when there are very serious grave issues, we must maintain a sense of confidentiality. Anything else, Praveen, you wanted to add to that? Whatever. Okay. Uh, any questions on this aspect of... Uh, yes, Franklin, go ahead. Sir, uh, two quick observations. Sir, Christianity is ABC. I want to explain Christianity is ABC. A okay. stands for acknowledging our sins and accepting God's forgiveness and grace. V stands for believing in Christ. And C stands for con confession. All three are important. Okay. Okay. The second observation I want to make is, sir, confession is an ongoing process. Uh, in the book of Peter, it says, sir, uh, uh, that your prayers be not hindered. I think the apostle is encouraging you to confess so that your prayers be not hindered. Okay. Yes, I think that scripture that Peter, uh, uh, which you quoted from, or Peter is very, very good. I think uh, sometimes that lack of confession can hinder our prayers. Yeah, that is true. Right. So uh, that's another very important thing that we keep in mind. That's why for us, we take confession seriously. I think Vanessa was saying that it was more of a joke <laughs> in, uh, you know, uh, in another denomination. But uh, uh, but I think we as Christians who believe in Jesus and who believe that God has forgiven us, uh, we must uh, understand the, the need for confession. And of course, con like I said earlier, confession is a way that we are acknowledging and receiving the grace of God. You know? So uh, for us, it is, uh, it, it is very important. Thank you, Franklin, for bringing those thoughts. I a couple of thoughts. Though. Yes, Praveen, go ahead. Uh, number one is uh, confession by itself is a uh, therapeutic actually, uh, as uh, we have already discussed. That is one of the main reasons uh, in the churches, the traditional churches. In fact, uh, 
uh, from 1500s only it changed but even before even orthodox churches all these churches they have this practice of confession uh, <coughs> because uh, it was therapeutic and unfortunately many of um, uh, christians also uh, they are not able to experience the forgiveness of god and take uh, uh, the courage because of god uh, forgiveness about god's forgiveness uh, because uh, they are isolated themselves they don't they they, they did not confess it uh, before people and all uh, and in the and also they this becomes very serious picture uh, almost plays the role like you know representing god uh, so that, that is one of the reasons this confession practice has been uh, introduced early church so it is therapeutic in its very nature but we have also seen in the history that it has been abused uh, or uh, you know the misuses of this also happen one thing i would like to bring to your notice and uh, would like to encourage all of us to be cautious about it especially when we go to <clears throat> if you come across any uh, charis uh, hyper charismatic uh, uh, groups they say unless you confess all your sins you would not be you will not be able to receive the holy spirit unless you confess all your sins you are not uh, healed i still remember one particular uh, incident uh, there is a, uh, a pastor uh, who is very much uh, uh, very close to me uh, he, and his wife uh, he, she has to undergo so many surgeries and there is another pastor who is highly educated man and uh, his wife wins uh, goes to uh, this lady and uh, who already underwent uh, uh, more than 15 surgeries she says you confess if you have hidden any sins from in god's sight you know uh, then god will heal you so god is not going to up uh, you know uh, withdraw his grace or he is not going to a uh, punish you for not confessing any any sin uh, so and he is not going to hold the anointing that is going to give to us the holy spirit who is indwelling in us he is not going to stop any of these because of confession uh, so uh, let us not be abused by these kind of practices these are very common and so happening so much in this uh, especially in our country it's happening very much and uh, there are lots of people undergoing depression because of this uh, they are not able to experience god's power or they are not going to they are not experiencing the anointing and they feel what sin have i hidden from god they were not able to figure it out so they are going through depression and let us not use the same thing to hurt people and damage people's uh, emo emotional life especially who are going through Uh, any kind of struggles in their lives so their struggle is not because they they have hidden some sins from god yes i think that abuse uh, that is taking place because of false theologies are uh, very unfortunate uh, where uh, there are teachings that say that if you have a hidden sin and uh, that is the reason why you are not succeeding or failing or not being healed uh and uh, some some pastors go to the extent of saying uh, you have not you don't have salvation you know uh, so they go to that extent of uh, putting such a guilt trip on people and that is un- very very unfortunate and uh, uh, that those are not biblical and uh, if they they have not understood god's heart god's heart is one of never wanting to retain you know any sin if he has even decided to have the lamb of god slain from the foundations of the world so clearly it is indicative of the fact that you know he wants us to live in a sin free atmosphere he wants to remove it completely so uh, and he has done it it is not we who do it but he has done it so thank you praveen for bringing that Okay well any other final thoughts otherwise uh we can end a little early today we do have a few minutes left but that's okay i think it was a good discussion uh i hope uh, it has uh, it is something that brings a sense of encouragement 
uh, and of course also helps us uh, recognize that in the hands of God, you know, we have no, we don't need to uh, worry. Uh, we, we have the confidence that he is willing to forgive us. Uh, so our confession should be uh, a matter of, of course, a sense of remorse, but also a sense of joy that we receive God's forgiveness. Uh, but let us continue to work towards overcoming, you know, the frequent sins that we might uh, fall into. On that note, thank you very much for joining us this evening. God bless you all. And uh, let me request uh, uh, Franklin, uh, if you can lead us in a closing prayer today. Gracious Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Lord, in the hustle and bustle of life, we pause to meditate on your word. Thank you, Lord, for today's study. Thank you, Lord, for being with our pastor and helping him, Lord, to share in-depth analysis. Thank you so much, Father. Lord, we ask your special anointing and blessings upon our pastor, Praveen, and all our teachers. Lord, that they will continue to provide the leadership that is so vital. And Lord, on the flip side, we want to thank you, Lord, for each and every one of us who have joined on the Zoom platform to come to learn and to grow in your grace. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you, Lord. Today's important subject, confession is a first step where we acknowledge our sins and we accept your forgiveness and grace. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will help us, Father, to come and to trust in you fully, knowing that you have already forgiven us and reconciled us. Lord, give us, Father, the strength to come to you and confess our sins. And Lord, help us to remember that confession is an ongoing process. And every time we stumble and we sin, we need to ask your forgiveness first and foremost. Lord, be with us, Father. Mold us as your dear children. Thank you, Lord. Take care of us and bless each and every one of us and our families. In Jesus' name we ask all this. Amen.